Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today we're diving into the world of Last Epoch, a action role-playing game very similar to Path of Exile and Diablo with deep customization and a time-twisting storyline. If you're a beginner just stepping into Ethera, this video is your ultimate guide to get started and make the most out of your adventure. So let's jump right into it. First off, let's just familiar with the basics. Last Epoch is an ARPG where you explore diverse zones, defeat enemies, collect loot and level up your character. The game features multiple classes, each with its own unique playstyle. Speaking of classes, take your time to explore them. There's the Sentinel, Rogue, Mage, Primalist and Acolyte. And each class has its own set of abilities and subclasses. Consider your preferred playstyle and pick a class that resonates with you. And a good thing here to know is that when you get to the point of choosing your subclass around level 20 or so while doing the campaign, this cannot be changed to another one as of now. So if you are playing the Acolyte for example and you choose to go for Lich as your subclass, you cannot change it later on to a Necromancer uh, for example. Now let's go over the passive skill tree. Last Epoch use a unique passive grid system. You invest skill points in the grid to unlock abilities for your character. And as you can see here, if you take 5 points in the Acolyte skill tree, this will unlock Hungering Souls. And then if you continue here, 10 points for summoning Bone Golem and so on. If we jump into our master class, which is going to be the Lich, we can also see that we have the whole skill tree unlocked here for us to go and pick whatever we want. But if we go to the Necromancer we can still put points in the tree but we can only unlock skills up to uh, 25 points. And you can see the chain here blocking our path. But it can be good to know uh, that you can still use the first half of the passive skill tree and also unlocking those skills for you if you would need them. It's also very easy to respect these points for the cost of gold, so don't be afraid to experiment here. Each class in Lost Epoch have access to unique sets of active skills, and each of these skills have their own unique skill tree that will modify by different ways. For example, here we have Gravewalker, which will add maximum number of skeletons, uh, we have Immortal here, which makes it so we have a chance to resummon the Skeleton if they die. Uh, you can go for Skeleton Rogues, this will add Skeleton Rogues. Or just this one, that will increase the attack, cost speed and move speed of our Skeleton. Uh, you get the idea here. There's a lot of combinations and setups to play around with here to make a preferred playstyle for your build. And this can also be changed or respect whenever you want, depending on what level you are on. You will get a different amount of points back and you can see this under the skill name here. For this character we will get 10 points back if you want to respect the skill which is also going to be the maximum points that you will get back. Go to respec, press the specialized skill and now you have an open slot for a new skill. Let's say you just want to remove one skill, you can go there, remove skill and just remove one instead of respecting the whole skill tree. When doing the campaign in Lost Epoch it's good to know that you will also unlock idle slots and additional passive points. It can be easy to miss some of them as you don't get them all from doing the main storyline and ideal when you are done with the campaign and start your journey for the end game you want to have them all unlocked to maximize your character potential. If you open up your map you can see in the left down corner here if you have all of the passives and idle slots unlocked. If you are missing some of them you can check out the on the quest to the right if you are getting a reward for either the idle or a passive point. Idle is an item that is very similar to Diablo 2's charm system and uh, idols here have uh, their own slots in the character inventory and uh, must be equipped there to be able to activate them. And they come in different sizes and you have to decide which one you want to use. We have the smaller ones like these which gives like basic stats like damage and resist and can be basically used for any class. But then we also have uh, the class specific idols which comes also in different sizes and forms. 
and these all have different affixes from the pool that applies to their class and most are just for more damage or defense but there are also those idols that are build enabling. In Lost Epoch there is a lot of loot that you can pick up and save for different reasons which we will go over more later in the video and uh, the stash is where you will bank your items and uh, you can share this between all of your characters unless you're playing the character found challenge which is basically a solo self found for uh, the character alone. Uh, as you can see here they have quite a bit of tabs and I do recommend you to start from the beginning to start and sort things out and this will save a ton of time where to look for certain items and how I've been setting up my stash is basically a tab for all unique slots here, uh, set pieces and also idols and then we have a ton of tabs just for crafting and uh, we also have one tab for each class with their own tabs for class specific idols. We have uh, class specific items and uh, also some, uh, some build specific items. And lastly we have just yeah, some for some uh, keys and uh, hopefully they will make it so keys stack on each other soon as they do take up quite a bit of space. Uh, if you want some extra gold the arena key here will give you 6.5k uh, each if you are selling them. Uh, can be good to know if you are struggling on gold. Gear can have different rarities depending on how many affixes they have on them. As most RPGs, first we have a common, magic or rare items. And common has no affixes, magic up to 2 and rare up to 4. And these affixes have different tiers which can be between 1 and 5, 1 being the lowest. Then we also have unique items with one or more unique modifiers on an item and also set pieces which is going to be part of a set giving us bonuses depending on how many pieces we have equipped on us. And then we have exalted items which is like rare items but with one or more affixes with a tier of 6 or 7 where 7 is going to be the max. And this item is going to be the main thing that you want to look for once you get to the end game to really optimize your build. And then last and one of those things that makes Lost Epoch really unique is going to be the legendary items where you combine an exalted item with a unique one. And this will transfer over one or more affixes from the exalted one to the unique one. And this is one of those things where you can really improve your build by a lot and make you want to grind for days uh, to be able to hit that really GG items. So how do we do that you might ask? Uh, first we need a unique with at least one legendary potential on it and also a exalted item of the same type as the unique so boots only work with other boots or gloves to gloves and uh, it needs to have two prefix and two suffix on it. The legendary potential of a unique item will tell us how many affixes will be added to the legendary from the exalted item and this range is between 1 to 4 and the chance of a unique to have more than one legendary potential is different for each item but in general things to note is basically the more rare the unique is the less chance of obtaining LP on it makes sense when you think about it. You can check on Last Epoch tools and if you go to each item you can basically see how rare it is uh, to obtain the item with more LP on it. Once you have your unique and exalted item you want to go and complete the Temporal Sanctum Dungeon. Uh, the higher tier you do this in the higher level of the unique you can use to transfer over the stats from the exalted item. Once you defeated the boss you get to the Eternity Cache. Click the item here and pray to Orange Jesus that it will hit the right affixes that you want. The more legendary potential on an item, the more affixes will get transferred from the exalted item and it's always going to be random which affixes that will be transferred. If you put an affix on a legendary that is class specific, the legendary becomes class specific so do keep that in mind. The crafting system in Lost Epoch allows to modify most equipped items by adding, removing or changing their affixes shards and this is fairly easy to understand. First we have the forging potential and this will indicate how much you can craft on an item. This number will decrease the more you craft on it. 
We have a glyphs here, which will change the outcome of the item. Glyph of Hope, for example, makes us have a 25% chance not to remove any forging potential when we do a craft. And then we have runes that are very similar to Path of Exile's uh, currency system, like uh, Rune of Refinement here works as a divine orb, revealing the affixes on uh, the item within their tiers. And then we have the affix shards, and this is where we get the modifiers to the item uh, that we want to craft on. An item can have four affixes in total, uh, two prefix and two suffix. And uh, on this item we have one open prefix here. Uh, so let's go and see what we can pick here. Let's go for melee attack speed and add affix. And now we have melee attack speed on this weapon. And you can also see down here how much forging potential it will cost for us to do the craft as well. Let's say we don't want to have health on melee hit. We can then change one of our glyphs here to Glyph of Chaos, which will randomize the item by increasing the tier by one, but randomize whatever we get here. So let's try it out. We got health on kill. We don't really want that. Let's continue. Chance to shock. Awesome. Let's stay there. And we can also continue to upgrade these affixes. Let's go with the Glyph of Hope for some increased not use forge potential. And continue, and continue, and continue. We can continue by adding even more with the crit chance. Let's see, okay, and perfect. We now completed our GG item here. Rune of Shattering will destroy an item creating a random number of affix shards containing its power. So if we were to use a Rune of Shattering on this item, we have a chance of getting some of those affixes back. So let's see how it goes. Okay, we get one melee, five chance to shock, and uh, yeah, we get some of those affixes back there. And this is really useful to use if you're struggling on getting some of those affixes that you are looking for. Usually some of those more rare ones, like class specific ones. Load filters allows us to remove items from our screen that we no longer want to see. Very important to have one and really easy to set up. Let's just start with just a very basic loot filter. If you press Shift F, you get straight to the loot filter page. If you want to create a new one, confirm. And here you can add rules. And uh, usually the first thing that you want to do is go to hide. And then we have rarity. And we want to block normal, magic and rare items. And this will make it so we can't see any normal magic or rare items. But we do really want to have health on our items that we find. So let's go over to health. We add health in here. Add this to our loot filter. And now we'll see all items with health on it. Let's see. We have this amulet here with some health. Boom. It shows up for our loot filter. Let's say we want to go a little bit more strict here. Then we can go to advanced options and under tiers here you can go for more or equal and then change this number to let's say five and this will indicate that we want uh, this item with a tier five or more health on it. Let's update this and see how it goes. And now you can see this amulet does not show on the filter. And it's very simple to set up this and you can play around with this uh, to make it suits how you like it. There's also a lot of complete loot filters that you can import as well. And if you go to Lost Epoch Tools and then go over to Loot Filter, you have uh, tons of filters to choose from here. And uh, my own here, the ultimate loot filter for all classes. Basically, make it so it filters out all of the bad stats that you don't really want. You can enable and disable however you like, uh, depending on how strict you want the filter to be. Uh, link for this will be in the description. Last Epoch Endgame content revolves around various activities and challenges that becomes available once player complete the main story. 
Uh, Monolith of Faith is one of the endgame features that introduce time-traveling challenges, and uh, players enter timelines and facing challenges enemies while earning different rewards. And once you defeat all the normal ones, you get access to empowered ones for harder enemies and greater rewards. As you progress further, you will encounter Shades of Oribos. Once you defeat him, you will increase the corruption to the timeline that you are doing and at the same time increasing its difficulty even more but also boosting item rarity and experience gained. Dungeons is another endgame activity that can be accessed from certain zones in the world. Currently there are three of them. We have Lightless Arbor, Soul Fire Bastion and also Temporal Sanctum. And each dungeon has four different difficulties and each provides different rewards. And also you will have to have the corresponding key to each dungeon to get access to them. I have a quick video for each dungeon if you want to learn more about them. I'll put them as well in the description. Lastly we have the arena and in the arena the player faces swarms of enemies in a confined space, waves enter after another and as they are completed uh, the wave counter will go up and so do the health and damage of the mobs. Uh, within every 10 waves completed the arena will continue in a random map. Before progressing player must choose one of two modifiers to continue or choose to forfeit the run. Once you get to wave 40 you will meet one of the three arena champions each with their own unique that will drop if you are able to defeat them. You also have the Endless Arena which is tracked by a leaderboard if you want to show off your build for others to see. In order to access the arena you also need to get a arena key. In Lost Epoch you can target farm certain uniques and set pieces from doing different content within the game. Uh, we just mentioned some of the endgame activities and from these bosses that will be at the end of each timeline or dungeon for example, we'll have a couple of items that can be guaranteed to drop from them. Uh, best way to see this for each boss drop is going to be to go to Last Epoch Tools and then under resources you can go for any source that you want. Uh, for example, let's look on uh, the last ruin here. And then under boss items you can then see all you can get from this end boss from this timeline. And you can also see how rare the item is going to be to drop as well. We also have random uniques and set farming options but with a bit of restriction. Uh, so we can still see me target farm certain items that we want. And this is going to be by doing monoliths, so here we get different rewards from these nodes or echoes. Uh, we have this one, a green one with a ring on it, and this will contain a random set piece when we complete this echo. We also have over here a orange one with a ring on it, and this will provide a unique item on completion. But then we also have stuff like these. And here we have a orange and green icon with a glove icon on it. And these will give us a set or unique glove when we complete this echo. And this is from doing the timeline ending the storm. And each of these timelines will have their own item type that you can try and farm. We have Fall of the Outcast which will provide bows and quivers. The Stolen Lands, Wands, Scepters, Staves and Catalysts. The Black Sun for Helms and Shields, Blood, Frost and Death, Body Armors, Ending the Storm, Gloves, Fall of the Empire will provide Belts, Reign of Dragons for Swords, Axes, Maces, Daggers and Spears, The Lost Ruin is for Relics, The Age of Winter, Rings and Amulets, and Spirit of Fire for Boots. So basically if you're looking for a certain item type you can use this to hopefully speed up the process. Good thing to note here is that the boss specific items cannot be dropped from the echo nodes. And also if you are struggling on finding idols you can also find those echoes containing uh, idols in the monolith as well and uh, this is going to be the fastest way of target farming them. Blessings are permanent increases to your character's stats or chance to find particular type of item. When you conquer a timeline you will get presented with different blessings to choose from. If you conquer the same timeline again you can choose to either keep your current blessing or replace it with a new one. Blessings apply throughout the entire game not just in the monolith of faith. And blessings granted by empowered timelines have a higher value than the version granted by normal timelines. 
and the increased drop rate of certain item types also applies to unique items so if you really are trying to farm let's say a unique stuff uh, going for the staff blessing is going to be helping out with that. In Lost Epoch, different ailments works a bit different than in other RPGs. For damage ailments, uh, first of all, here you can be a cold build dealing ignites or a fire build that deals bleeding damage. And the reason for this is in Lost Epoch you get a chance to ignite, for example, and this will apply to everything. And the higher chance that you have, the more stacks will be applied per hit. So for example, if you have 500% chance to ignite, you will deal 5 stacks per hit. Also, each element have a base damage that will be scaled its damage from instead of a lot of other RPGs like Path of Exile where a element will be scaling from the initial hit. Uh, so bigger hits, more ignite damage for example, and that is not the case for Lost Epoch. Attack or cost speed is going to be the way to go here as you want to apply as many stacks as you can. Most damage ailments in Lost Epoch is going to have an unlimited stack limit. Lost Epoch have a really good game guide within the game. If you press G you will get to the guide page and here you can more or less find most things about the game. It's uh, quite detailed and really easy to understand and it's a huge help for new players and in some cases even for us that have been playing the game for over thousands of hours. And Lost Epoch Tools is a huge help while playing the game. I know I mentioned them a few times in this video, so just a quick shout out to them. Uh, here you can find most things about the game. Uh, you have different builds, items, skills, uh, minions, a lot of great stuff to check out that will help out. If you got any questions or like to share something that I didn't go over, feel free to drop a comment below uh, for others to take part of. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!